Good morning, I'm Father X, and today we'll continue talking about the sexy topic of case law and prior state appellate court decisions that can help you greatly in your child custody case. In the prior episode, we talked about why you absolutely need to know case law. In this episode, we'll talk about how to research case law using Google Scholar so it becomes a valuable tool for you. Later in this episode, we can answer the question, shouldn't my lawyer handle the case law research instead of me? But first, strap in. We're going hardcore now. Google Scholar is a separate search engine from regular Google Search, but both are free. To access Google Scholar, you can go to google.com and search for Google Scholar, or you can directly visit the scholar.google.com website. Once you're on Google Scholar, you'll see a search bar with buttons for articles and case law. Articles contain academic research studies on millions of topics. For our purposes, click on Case Law. Next, you'll see buttons for federal courts and maybe a state you recently searched. But see the link for Select Courts and click on that. You'll see a list of courts for all 50 states. That's where you choose your appellate courts for your state. Let's talk about federal court decisions briefly. I didn't search federal law because child custody decisions are primarily based on state law. The Constitution and federal law protect your parental rights. But the issue is that the mother also has rights as a parent. If you both can't agree on custody for your child, then if either parent petitions the court, the state courts decide, supposedly based on the child's best interests. If the parents should have 50-50 custody or primary or sole custody, Most parenting arrangements should end up 50-50, but that doesn't work if one parent is unfit, abusive, or neglectful, or other reasons where 50-50 just doesn't work. And you need a trial to figure that out because one of you asked the courts to get involved. When you're on Google Scholar and selecting state courts, which do you choose? You can only use case law from the state where the trial is being held. If your case is in California, your judge is required to follow California law. Case law from Michigan or New Jersey would be worthless to you. Don't waste time searching other states' cases. State Appellate Court Structures Learn your state's court hierarchy because there are 50 states with varying structures. Each state has different names for these courts, but the concept of the hierarchy is similar. States have lower trial courts that decide many legal matters, including family law. Appeals from the lower courts go to the appellate court directly above them and further appeals go to the state's highest court of appeals. Decisions by a higher court are binding to the courts directly below them. When the highest court of appeals decides how to apply child custody laws, the appellate courts and lower trial courts are required to abide by that ruling and methodology for other future cases. And appellate court decisions in the middle are binding on the trial courts directly below them. If your judge is under the first appellate division, do they have to abide by case law from the third division? In some states, middle appellate court rulings only bind lower courts in their jurisdiction. In other states, any middle appellate court rulings bind all the lower courts. Figure this out for your state so you know which appellate court cases to focus on for your research. If your judge is under the first appellate division and you find a helpful child custody ruling in the third appellate division, and it's not binding on your judge, you can still use that case in your closing arguments, along with first division cases. As long as it's in your state's court system, even if it's not binding authority that your judge must follow, it can be persuasive authority, and your judge can get guidance from these decisions in other jurisdictions in your state but not from other states. What's the court hierarchy for my state? You can look up your state's court structure on your state government's website or on regular Google search. Assume nobody will tell you unless you try to figure it out. Let me give you two quick examples for Illinois and Delaware to show you, and then we'll move on to searching for actual cases. On regular Google search, type, what is the appellate court structure of Illinois? And the first thing that pops up is from the Illinois court state government website that says there are five appellate districts. And it says you can then petition what's called the Supreme Court to appeal appellate district decisions. 
If I go to that website, I can see a map of the five appellate districts, where the first district is in Chicago, the second district is in Elgin, Illinois, etc. And when you go to Google Scholar to select courts in Illinois, you can see the boxes match this structure, an appellate court and then a Supreme Court. You can search either one or both, but just search the higher court to start to narrow your results. Before I continue, please like, subscribe, and share. Also, if you find this information helpful, please support this channel. Donate on my YouTube channel's About page using PayPal or Venmo. As another example, you can Google, what is the appellate court structure of Delaware? This shows their highest state court is called the Supreme Court, and it gets appeals from the Court of Chancery, Superior Court, and Family Court. And there's a nice diagram that I want to see. So I click on the diagram and I see family court appeals go up to the superior court and supreme court, which is confusing. But when I go to the Delaware court's website, it tells me family court civil appeals go directly to the highest state supreme court, but the family court criminal appeals go to the superior court in the middle of this hierarchy. And when you go to Google Scholar for Delaware, you can see the boxes match this structure the Court of Chancery, Superior Court, and then Supreme Court. So pick Supreme Court to research appeals on family court civil cases. Then you go to the bottom of the page and click Done. Some states named their highest court the Court of Appeals, but other states named it Supreme Court. Each state thinks they're special. Learn the naming structure from official websites like state government websites or law schools. How do you know which court made the ruling in a case? When you click on a case on Google Scholar, the top header of the case tells you which appellate division made this decision. For example, the Jameson v. Williams case in Illinois from 2020 was decided by the appellate court of Illinois, the third district. And this Aguilar v. Badger case in Oregon from 2020 was made by the Court of Appeals of Oregon. Your state's appellate courts review a wide variety of lower court decisions, such as criminal, insurance fraud, civil lawsuits, personal injury, child support, and child custody. Google Scholar's case law database is huge, but you only want to search for child custody cases. You can also look up case law related to child support if you're also fighting that. I myself used Google Scholar to learn the real child support laws. Searching for useful case law in this huge database might seem like finding a needle in a haystack, but it's not that scary. It's more like searching for a large, valuable silver screw in a small haystack. It requires dedication and time, and it's very achievable. I started at ground zero. Don't be intimidated. This is how you fight for your children. And even if a case isn't useful for you, when you read it, you'll still learn how to think, speak, and write like an appellate court judge. On the Google Scholar search menu, after you select your state's appeals courts and click Done, you'll search key terms one at a time to get decisions on each best interest factor. Here are good examples of search terms to use. Write them down. Best interest of the child, 50-50 custody, equal parenting time, child custody and domestic violence, child custody and emotional stability of parents. For example, if you already selected Illinois appellate courts, then enter best interests of the child in the search bar. There are many pages of results for Illinois cases, so read them one at a time. If you click on the left-hand bar, and choose cases from 2015 onward, you narrow your search to more recent cases. Here are other search terms you can write down. Child custody and mental health of parents, child custody and emotional development, child custody and intellectual development, child custody and educational needs, child custody and home environment, parenting time and basic needs of the child, child custody and parental alienation, Child Custody and Financial Stability, Child Custody and Primary Caretaker, Child Custody and Lying or Manipulating the Court Process, Legal Custody of Children, Parenting Time and Preferences of the Child. I put the words Child Custody into these search terms to narrow the results to family court cases. Otherwise, I would get cases not related to child's custody, like other civil lawsuits. 
experiment with search terms. The search will provide appellate court cases on these topics. Any one case can cover multiple best interest factors. Save cases that relate to your specific case as a PDF file on your personal computer or thumb drive organized by best interest factor. You want them easily accessible when you need them. Don't just read them on Google Scholar and then plan to look them up again later. You'll forget them if you don't save them. Don't expect to find one appellate court decision with exactly the same facts as your case, and that's normal. Instead, if your ex-spouse engaged in domestic violence, find three to five cases where the violent parent lost custody. Look for three to five cases related to your child's education with similar facts as your case. Find three to five cases where the facts about effective co-parenting are like your case and resulted in 50-50 custody, and so on. By reviewing 50 to 100 cases, you gain valuable insights from different angles to build a well-rounded case, to corner and control your judge on the law. Your search results will generally provide two types of cases, mom versus dad and child protective services versus an allegedly abusive parent. If you're in a mom versus dad custody case, focus on cases with titles like Heather versus Ronald or Henry versus Henry. The Department of Social Services cases are about that agency suing an allegedly abusive or neglectful parent to take their kids away, and those cases name just one party, the child, like Matter of Alexander Z or Matter of Emmanuel J. Cases like these can teach you. Would you or the mother be considered abusive or neglectful based on prior court decisions? The year of the case ruling matters. Each state each case states the year that decision was made. Start your search with decisions from the last 10 years or so to narrow your search results. You can always expand your search. In addition, appellate court cases can be overturned years later. Here's an imaginary example. A decision from 2005 might say it's okay for a parent to spank a child, but a 2016 case might overturn that and now say it's in the worst interests of a child to be spanked. So in 2023, you can't use the 2005 case to say it's okay that you spanked your child because that rule changed in 2016. However, rules don't really change that much over time. I'm telling you this just so you're aware of this possibility. Also, Florida and Missouri passed new 50-50 custody laws in 2023. So with new laws, it's possible that many of Missouri and Florida's prior appellate court decisions just don't apply. You have to read them and see if they make sense with the new laws in place. You'll find many cases that aren't useful to you, but the useful ones will refer you to other relevant cases. These references can be a gold mine. For example, in the New York 1997 case of Deloche versus Deloche, the appellate court mentions previous cases like Irwin versus Nyland, Esbach versus Esbach, and Alice versus Joshua. These cases provide more insights. You can then directly search these other cases in Google Scholar. So even if it takes time to find one relevant case, the references within it can quickly lead you to five more. And these five can lead you to 20 more relevant cases. This creates a snowball effect that can help you research more and faster. In episode 5A, we discussed the Felty versus Felty case that said, in determining those best interests, the court must evaluate the totality of the circumstances. Among the factors to be considered when evaluating the child's best interests are the parental guidance provided by the custodial parent, each parent's ability to provide for the child's emotional and intellectual development, etc. Evaluate all the best interest factors. Many lazy family lawyers and judges focus on only three to four factors. Instead, analyze 10 to 15 best interest factors to prove the majority favor you as the custodial parent. This helps you outperform the family lawyers who focus on only a few factors, and you show the judge you're the parent who understands the total picture. Not all appellate court decisions are correct or smart. I don't agree with all appellate court decisions, but I found that overall, higher courts interpret the best interest of the child far more intelligently than lower court judges. Knowledge and intelligence are two of your primary weapons against family court. Family court lawyers and judges cannot compete with intelligent thought. 
This research is time consuming, but that's what fighting for your kids looks like. I spent a year and a half reading case law after work or at 3 a.m. when I couldn't sleep because of all the stress. A custody battle is like having an extra job for 25 hours a week for several months on top of your regular job. It's unfair, but if you want custody of your kids, this is how you fight. Check your state government's do-it-yourself website for family court filings and petitions. Learn all you can. But I realized they cover a small percentage of what you really need for your child custody battle. Their information tends to be superficial. To really learn how child custody decisions should be made, research lots of case law. Don't just rely on what people in family court tell you. Shouldn't my lawyer handle the case law research instead of me? The answer is no, and here's why. First, case law is written in plain English, and you can understand it as well as a lawyer can. Appellate court child custody decisions are just stories about other families, usually three to five pages long, discussing facts and applying the law. So there's very little confusing legal language, if any. These cases show how other parents were chosen as primary custodial parents, helping you connect your story to how family court decisions are supposed to be made. Cases will guide you on which facts to emphasize in court and help you avoid bringing up irrelevant issues in your trial. Second, knowledge of the law matters, but the specific facts of your case matter more. You're the expert on your case because you lived it. For example, if you and your lawyer both read a case where the father gained custody because the mother tried to exclude the father from their kid's life for no legitimate reason by threatening to move the children to another state, you'd recognize the relevance if this happened to you. And we know it's practically impossible to quickly tell your lawyer 100% of what happened in your life the past several years. So your lawyer wouldn't know this unless you informed him. Case law helps you identify key facts that matter. Third, the opposing party can use unfavorable facts against you, and you need to counter that. Your lawyer won't know about negative facts unless you tell him, and you won't tell him if you don't know these facts are relevant. Read case law and identify potential negative facts in the context of the totality of the circumstances. Everybody has some bad facts, but what matters is the net total of good and bad. Fourth, I found that mostly... Family lawyers don't research appellate court decisions. Judges and mother's lawyers may ignore case law just to favor the mother. And the father's lawyer may be lazy or unwilling to fight the status quo of default custody to the mother. Nobody will be as motivated as you to find legal decisions that support you being a 50-50 or primary custodial parent. And whatever you learn, share it with your lawyer, if you have one, so you can strategize together on how to use it. These might be the darkest days of your life. They were for me. I'm making these educational videos to help you navigate this nightmare. If you subscribe, you can get updates when I post more videos. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing with your friends who are in a similar situation. If you like, subscribe, and share, it'll help get this message out to more fathers. Please support this channel so I can make more videos. You can donate via my YouTube channel's About page using PayPal or Venmo.